I'm here with Adventure or Bust, and I'm gonna take a tour of their bus right now. Stay tuned. you both at Tiny Fest California. Yeah, I'm um, Brittany. I'm Brittany. Steve. Brittany and, and Steve. We live in Adventure or Bust, which is our self-built off-grid school bus home. Which I'm going to obviously put your Instagram in the corner of the page yep. and you guys will see it. The main reason I wanted to talk to you guys was because of Steve's knowledge at Tiny Fest California. <laughs> I sat in your bus for like a half an hour while people were coming in and out and we were talking about solar. That's true. Yeah, that happened. Steve, why don't you kind of give us a breakdown on your, because you have how many, why don't you just give us a whole breakdown on your solar? When we built the bus, we didn't have enough money to put solar panels in. We self-built the whole thing and funded it and we're poor, so. When I wired the bus, I wired everything for normal AC power. Mm -hmm. And I decided, we knew, not decided, that later on we're gonna, we're definitely gonna add a solar system. So we were nervous about, uh, you know, convert, inverting everything from, from DC power to AC power to, to, to get that set up. So what ended up happening was we measured the roof and I'd done tons of calculators and all kinds of things to try to figure out, you know, what a draw was going to be. In the end, it just made total sense to just figure out how many panels would fit. Mm -hmm. And that's how many I installed. And then I would just reverse engineer the whole thing from there. How many panels is it? Because so, I'm not going to get on the roof to shoot this. So, so <laughs> I have some, <laughs> we have six panels up there okay. uh, and it, for a total of 2.1 kilowatts. Of, uh, of power. 2.1 kilowatts, which is 2,100 watts. 2,100 watts, exactly. 2,100 watts of yep. freaking panels. And uh, that, that'll that run through a 60 amp MPPT charge controller. Um, Just like your boy. <laughs> yeah, the same I one. I have the same one. The yeah. Renogy, uh, it's a Commander 60 amp MPPT. It's pretty all right. You have this the 60 amp solar charge MPPT, which is MPPT. important. The MPPT is the maximum, which is that, that's what the M stands for. Yeah, so basically it's a smart controller. Yep. And so it. it <laughs> It's like old school ones would just be like, all right, the voltage is right, and they shut it off. This one is, is a lot smarter, and it understands like what we're drawing versus what's there, and it can sort of, it, your batteries are a lot healthier using it. Right. Going into too much time. And you have a, uh, you have a 60 amp solar charge control, you have 2100 watts of panels. Correct. How much your battery bank? So uh, our battery bank is set up in a 48 volt system. Um, we have eight batteries for a total of 200 amp hours at 48 volts. Uh, most people are blown away. Uh, 
48 volt system. Yeah, I don't think people realize what a 48 volt system is freaking even like. That is crazy. <laughs> okay, so if we look at if we look at 48 versus 12 volts, so let's just say like we have some. I run 12 volt by the way, which is most people van dwellers do. Most people run 12 volts, but the future is higher voltage, and I'll tell you why. So a 48 volt system. Uh, the amperage is a lot lower. So if you have something that at 12 volts costs, let's say 10 amps to run, at 24 volts, it's gonna cost five amps, and at 48 volts, it costs two and a half amps. And what does that mean? So if we think of amps like water in a pipe, and electricity is this water flowing through a pipe, and the wire is the pipe. So if we have less amperage, we can use a smaller gauge wire, so we save money on copper, we save space. Amps over a long run, like a, let me think about how I wanna explain that. But that's the best way. The, the best way is water in the pipe. Yep. So that's the best analogy I can think of. And uh, it's- So you, you use, because of the 48 volt system, you're essentially saying you use a smaller pipe to run that water through than somebody on a 12 volt system has a larger pipe. Absolutely, so like, whereas the thickness of wire in between uh, and, and a 12 volt battery system to run from your battery to your inverter might be the size of your finger or your thumb. Which, which I have. Yeah, so mine's like the size of uh, a little thicker than a pencil. So you yep. save a, you save a lot of money in wire there, and the amperage is a lot lower, so it's a little safer to work with. And the amperage is lower, which is less of a draw. Yeah, absolutely. right, and that's less power technically being used. Definitely. Mostly, you use a, a forty-eight volt system because you run your entire bus off of AC power. Correct. Yeah. So a lot of people want to run DC appliances. To me, that didn't make sense. So like an RV refrigerator, for example. So this is a DC refrigerator, like a three-way. It's like. DC power, AC power, and propane. So a lot of people don't know, but like a propane refrigerator is the number one cause of RV fires. You can Google that, read it, it's in a bunch of articles. There it is. And so we decided that being an ex-firefighter that I didn't want any risk. Like we have two dogs in here with us, and if I'm out hiking or, or swimming or whatever we're doing, I don't want to be worried about my dogs burning to death. So that's not acceptable. So what we decided to do was run an AC refrigerator. And most people are like, oh man, that fridge is gonna be a huge draw. And it's really not. It draws about an amp and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, about an amp and a half. Uh, and and it'll run cycle it. on and off. So of occasionally course. you'll hear it go, but for like four seconds. Just like, and this, so your refrigerator was bought at like a Sears or like a like a Home like a, Depot. Like a Home Depot, there you 298 go. 298 bucks. There you go. So, and like, like for instance, like mine is like a Dometic, yep. which was $700. Yep. And yeah. you guys have a fridge freezer, yeah, which, yep. was, which I'll show. Yep. So we have we have uh, about 10 cubic feet of refrigerator and freezer. That's crazy. It, it's plenty. So we can last, the two of us, <laughs> easily 10 days in the amount of food we can fit in there. Your refrigerator is like <laughs> essentially what a small apartment has. I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah. an apartment fridge. It's an apartment. Yeah. 20, 24 inch wide, five feet tall. Mm -hmm. with the, and you run it obviously with your 48 volt system, which is why you pretty much did it is because of your appliances. Absolutely, right. yeah. So for me, like I was really, I really cared about the aesthetics. So I really wanted to have stainless steel to match with the green mm -hmm. and the cedar and the white. Um, so I was pretty picky from a design standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> we're able to have a, a, you know, a low draw propane for the stove. Yep. Our washer dryer combo yep. runs on electricity. I don't think everybody's heard you on that one. Washer dryer <laughs> yeah. inside of a bus. <laughs> yeah. So are you kidding me? <laughs> our goal was to build. A, we wanted to build a tiny house, but in a school bus, right? Yep. And so that's. Like some guys are like, oh, I'm building a schoolie or I'm building a tiny house or whatever. We wanted to take our apartment and move it into a bus. That was the goal, right? So we didn't want to feel like we gave up anything. I don't think we did. So we have a washer dryer combo. It runs totally on our solar setup. It uses about 12 gallons of water to do a wash. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to be able to do laundry in the middle of whatever national forest we're hanging out in or <laughs> national park or whatever. Now, when I first met you about a week ago, um, I think I was talking to you and you were telling me you were running the AC, which is the air conditioning and vacuuming at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were and, a, and an additional fan. Um, I don't do any sort of thinking when it comes to the power. The only thing I do think about is at nighttime, we have an instant pot, so a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. And that, once you plug it in and it starts going to pressure, it'll take like 22 amps out. Isn't that crazy? To start getting the pressure. It's yeah, a huge so straw, yeah. I, I, Which is weird, that's what I have. It. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we use it in day. Yeah, we can use it at night, but it, I, don't, I don't think I want to take the risk. Um, so we just use it during the day or the evening. We have a pretty big battery bank. We could run it at night. It would just be taxing. Uh, we have 200 amp hours at 48 volts. So that's the equivalent of 800 amp hours at 12 volts or eight 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. Uh, our battery bank is AGM. 
uh, we found the most uh, cost efficient way to put in an AGM battery bank and that's on Amazon. Yep. Uh, we found them for 165 bucks a piece. Yep. Uh, and we have, I mean, we have a big system, so we don't discharge them too far. So we're not too worried about abusing them too much where I'm not sure what the quality of them, what they are, but uh, no issues. And you've been living out of your bus for? Two years. Oh, 18 months. 18 months living out of the bus and you started in Florida. Yep. yep. Uh, Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota, excuse me. Yep. Sarasota, and you traveled the country the last 18 months. Uh, well, we've been traveling for two months, but living in the bus full time for 18 months. Okay, thank you. So, uh, in the last eight weeks or so, I just checked the odometer today, we've done like 7,300 miles to get from here. We're in uh, Burbank, California, which is like about a, I don't know, like 2,300 mile trip, something like that. Yep. And so, uh, but we're here by way of Portland and a bunch of cool stuff in between. So, and check out their Instagram to actually check out all of their cool adventures they've been on. Cause that's really where you guys have posted a lot about yep. where you've been and what you've been doing and how you've been doing and where you're going to end exactly. up. Um, I get this question a lot. How do you live and work in this environment? So why don't we kind of dive into what you guys do for work? Yeah, so I work for myself. I do website strategy and development mm -hmm. um, and design. So I can work from anywhere. Um, a lot of my clients are on the East Coast still. Um, I've got a couple clients on the West Coast, um, all over. And I work with a, I work in like a collaborative partnership type deal where I provide design, strategy, development to my clients as well as the people that I partner with clients and, and they do that for my clients. So it's kind of like working for an agency except you're by yourself with your own company. Cool. Time out. You guys smell something weird? I do. We're going to pick this back up. I don't know where we are. The oven was on and there was a bunch of smoke. We're like, man, where is the smoke coming from? <laughs> I thought it was um, some other car. Yeah, right I leaned into that. <laughs> yeah, that was all me. We melted something, but whatever. My bad. Right now we're traveling. I'm a new graduate nurse. And most of what I do is drive the bus and drink beer. <laughs> So, what will you be doing? Maybe the best answer in the world right there. <laughs> so uh, I'm a new graduate nurse. Uh, we gra I graduated nursing school. We knew we didn't want to stay in Florida anymore. Uh, we wanted to take a trip and find where we might belong long term. And so we were taking this trip across the country to find uh, a place that we love. Yeah. So I'm trying to get some experience in, and, th and then we're going to take some contracts and try to work a little less and live a little more. But you so said earlier you were an ex-firefighter, so yep. the firefighting led you into nursing. Absolutely. Yeah, I was you want to you know, save lives and shit. Absolutely. So I was a firefighter EMT. Um, I did 911 dispatch for the city of Orlando. We, I love the job and I love helping people and it was just a natural transition. I knew that if I wanted to do more in the medical field, I'd have to become a paramedic. And so nursing was a nice, a better way for, for us cool. to, to be more mobile to do it. So it's not just, you know, driving the bus and drinking beers. No, no. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I got to like look, look at a map or, you know, <laughs> find a parking Classic. spot or whatever. Uh, well, actually, you know, that, that's a good segue because, you know, parking like my van, I, I, I call it ghost van. I, I, have, I have a little bit easier finding a parking spot. Mine's only 20 feet in length. Yep. Yours is obviously a little bit bigger than that. So what is it like parking a bus compared to like what I park as a van? A lot of time when I was in my career for fighting fire, I, I drove um, I drove a five ton uh, brush truck mm -hmm. for the for the parks department. So I did wild vents fire. So for me, driving and parking this thing is no problem, but you ask where, right? So where mm -hmm. am I gonna park? So in seven weeks or almost eight weeks now, we've paid to park. Six times? No, total? five now. I, I've been keeping track five times total and the fifth time thank you California Parks and Rec uh, we paid uh, ninety six dollars to park on the side of the one in Big Sur <laughs> thank you California Parks yeah Rec. we didn't make any reservations and we knew that it, the we couldn't fit and so we found an area where there are no signs we rolled the dice and uh, our number came up yeah but lost that dice well. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean we've traveled the whole country usually what we do um, is we stay in National Forest, BLM land. Yep. Um, if we're not close enough to any of those and we're in a big city, you can find areas that don't have restricted parking pretty easily. Um, Walmart, Home Depot's. Lowe's, areas, yeah. yeah. Uh, any private Costco's. parking lot, if you ask ahead of time, it's usually not a problem. Truck stops, rest areas, Vista points. We even reached out to some Facebook groups for okay. tiny house hosting and tiny house people and let people know like, hey, we're coming through your city, do you have parking for us? And we got a lot of really Over great 30 responses. responses of That's people amazing. saying, hey, come check out our city. Yeah. And 
That's function. amazing. Yeah. I didn't yeah, think about they, that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Great. Awesome. yeah. There's some really great apps too. Um, iOverlander. iOverlander. Uh, all stays is free campsites. Free campsites. Net. Boondockers um, welcome. Boondockers welcome. Absolutely. Um, all trails is pretty good if you want to like yeah. kind of hide out at a trailhead. Really, the solar is what's changed the game for us because we don't have, correct. We don't have to be plugged anywhere, and as long as we've got 110 gallons of fresh water, so as long as we can find somewhere to fill up, which also. So there's a website called SantaDumps.com, and like most of the people that I've talked to in this community haven't heard of it. It's awesome, including me. So you can it you can find it. Uh, so you go there and you can search by uh, country, uh, state, and then city. And it'll tell you, uh, number one, the cost to dump your tank and uh, to get water. And usually I found that water is free. And so if you just need to get some water, uh, it's totally free. And it'll tell you what sort of water it is, potable, non-potable, or they don't know. So it's pretty cool. It's yeah. an awesome resource. We have paid for water one time, I think. We paid $8. Which and is nothing on 110 gallons. Yeah, so eight bucks yeah. for 110 <laughs> gallons of water. And actually, 110 we, gallons. Yeah. Actually, before we left, we took a couple showers, dumped the tank again, and refilled. <laughs> <laughs> so 110 gallons is massive. Yeah. yeah. That's now, a, mine's only 18. So for yeah, the van lifers find that a bit funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like to laugh. 110 gallons is. Yeah. And your gray water 72. 72. Yeah. Gray water 72. Fresh water is 110, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty massive. Yeah. So what we did is we found uh, there's a place in, in Florida that sold tanks. It was just like a water tank place, food grade water tanks. And so I rolled in there and I asked the guy, you know, what do you got that's on sale or whatever? And he had this 72 gallon tank that actually fit perfectly in between the frame and the side skirting of the bus. And it was like 150 bucks. Yeah. So that's the easy thing to scoop up. That's then, crazy. Yeah, and then the 110 gallon fresh water, I think we walked out of there for less than $350 total. So your two tanks were under 500 Yeah, absolutely. And if you look online, you pay, you know, thousands of dollars for like two tanks that size. That that's size easily. Yeah, I mean, this company was a lot cheaper than online. It was in West Palm Beach, Florida. Get on the if any, but any van builds are in yeah. Florida, go right ahead. For yeah. sure, and it's all food grade. And the thing is, if you put a tank that's too big for what you need, and you're worried about weight, you don't always have to fill it. But if we're going out into the national forest, if we're going to be out there for several days, or, or we want to shower every day for a few days, we know we want, you know, whatever, to fill it up. You don't always have to. Fill how it. long does one ten last? It depends how conservative we are. I would say showering, like a normal shower, like a ten minute shower each. Uh, cooking and drinking and cleaning Daily. all of our dishes, yeah. probably like three or four days, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty. This is two of you, so yeah, that's, that's a us. difference, yeah. And um, we, I mean, drink close, probably close to a gallon of water each day yep. if we wanted to run the washer. Plus, you have two dogs, so massive, massive dogs. They drink a lot. Yeah. Yeah, unconservatively. Yeah, we don't we don't worry about water really. But that's if great. we had to when we were camping, it could last a long time. Yeah, yeah. that's great. A couple weeks. That's great. That's um, great. And that, that website helped you out obviously tremendously. Yeah, SantaDumps.com is awesome. Yes, and they're not you're, you're obviously not getting paid for that. So no, no, no. Neither no. am I. So <laughs> No, this is like You're straight nothing. up yeah. like uh, just like a user saying that this is a good service. Yep. So I didn't find them actually until about halfway through our trip. And we were like struggling to find water. Like, oh God, you know, we'll go to this gas station and ask. I'm like, oh, you can have like a little bit or, you know, like fill up your bottle. And then I found this website and it was like, it was a total game changer. Unbelievable. And it, usually it's like a gas station. And sometimes it's like, hey, you fill your fuel tank, you get a free fill of your water tank and a dump. Like, yep. it's totally changed the game. Unbelievable. I use a porta body style toilet, and you just said that you have a composting toilet. Mm -hmm. What made you guys go with a composting toilet, it, especially because you're on a bus? Uh, what made you go with a composting toilet all, all, other than like a black water? So, here we go. We use all biodegradable soaps all the time. Right. Ooh, okay. So we didn't want to produce any black water because it's a lot easier to get rid of gray water than it is black water. Mm -hmm. Right. Couldn't so agree more. Our gray water, like, it wouldn't taste good, but I could drink it and it wouldn't kill me. Like, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. It right? is. So we knew that we didn't want to deal with black water. So we were looking at options. You know, there's like the incinerating toilet, there's a chemical toilet, and then there's the composting toilet. And she was really pushing towards the. We have a nature said composting toilet, and I was afraid of it. It's you expensive, know, but it's worth it. It's yeah. a lot of money, and I, I didn't know if it would, you know, keep the smell down, or, you know, not to be weird, but we're talking about poo, so. Yep. If it would keep <laughs> the smell down or whatever. So what I did is I went online and I watched a ton of videos, and I found out that there's a lot of full-time RVers that use this toilet, and actually if they buy a new rig, they take the old toilet out and they put in a composter. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, I can't say enough good things about it. The 
The one thing that we have found is if you're parked like a really uneven terrain, the liquids can get into the solids. Like mm -hmm. that's a thing that can happen. It separates the liquids and the solids. And if the, the, the main thing is to keep the solids the right amount of dry. Okay. And um, if they get wet, that's when you get smell. And it's actually, it's the pee that smells. Yeah, I'm sure. Doesn't smell Dumping at all. The yep. pee bucket is it is disgusting, right? And you have to dump. We, I mean, we drink a lot, so we pee a lot, and then we have to dump it every like two days, and it's just that's but the, the worst solids. Part. Yeah, the solids is about once a month. Yeah, to be honest, and I mean, cool. I've been using this for like five weeks. Vouch, do you smell anything? I don't. I actually don't. I actually didn't. When I walked yeah. on, I did not smell anything. And there were three of us in it for maybe like just Juno weeks. and Coda, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, no, I'm just kidding. They don't smell at all. <laughs> and for and for us, um, the reason a big reason why I went with a compost toilet is that sustainability is really important for us. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're driving a bus that uses diesel. So I know that that's not sustainable, but. We've got off-grid water capabilities, the solar, biodegradable soaps, yeah. compost toilet. We try to reduce our plastic and our waste usage. We wanted to live tiny and we wanted to live small. And mm -hmm. part of that is also decreasing the size of our footprint. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like a compost toilet has made a complete uh, convert out of me because, I mean, it's pretty crazy to think about people are dying of thirst and, the, and we, we defecate in a gallon or a gallon and a half of water and flush your away. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. You Isn't know what I mean? Crazy? That's completely drinkable water. And so, like, after using this, I'm like, God, like, I feel so, like, if I use a normal flush toilet, I feel so guilty. I'm like, what a waste. Like, it that's is. a gallon of water just gone. <laughs> yep. Especially here in Southern California. Like, yeah, we, we their towns, yeah. their towns, you turn on the tap and nothing comes out. Yeah. You know? It, so, compost toilet. Compost toilet is the way to go. Um, you have an AC. Absolutely. Uh, which we're going to talk about runs off your solar, which is remarkable. It's running right now. It is running right now, actually, as we speak. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me cool. It says 62 over there. Uh, yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> not up here, though. It's like yeah, it's 80 what, up about 80 <laughs> something. Least, it's not a yeah. big deal. Um, you have this amazing wood burning, wood burning stove yep. uh, that, I, that I actually looked at myself, and I love. Okay. Where did you get it? Okay, so this is a Cubic Mini Grizzly. Cubic Mini Grizzly. And um, they have a few models. They have the Cub, which is smaller than this, and then they have the Grizzly, which is the next size up. And the reason I love Cubic Mini Wood Stoves is because it seems like a, it's a smaller company. When yep. you call, they're out of Canada, and you talk to the dude that's like running the joint. Yeah. So it's <laughs> awesome. It's you like call, maybe three people. Yeah, you call for customer support, and the guy's on the phone in like three rings, and he'll tell you anything you want to know. So we bought a brand new stove. We waited the lead time. It takes like a month to get it from Canada. Uh, but once it gets here, it's totally worth it. We had an issue, our glass cracked, like on our 10th burn or something like that. And so I called the guy up and he didn't ask for anything. He, he apologized, like, look, I'm really sorry. I don't understand why this happened, but uh, there's new in the mail. That's it, don't worry about it. Done. Done, no no problem at all. Like, I can't recommend a bit that business enough. Like, they're awesome. Cubic uh, mini wood stoves. Their stoves are really cool and I've never seen one in person until I came onto your guys' show. Yeah, please, have a look. Uh, this thing will cook you out. We were in the Grand Canyon like a month ago and it was snowing there the week before we were there. It was like 35 degrees and we were in here with the stove going. It was 85, right? I mean, it was yeah. hot. You guys were comfortable. Hot. Right. I had to open the windows. I was in my boxers. We were watching a movie. Like, life was good. Yeah, I was going to say, life is good life at that was point. Good. Yeah, life was good right then. <laughs> That's amazing. And it was snow, it was snow outside. Uh, it was no, snow on the ground. It the had snowed the before. week before, yeah. but it was like. But there's snow on the ground. Yeah, it was 35 yeah, yeah, outside. Yeah, and that's. I mean, <laughs> so for anybody that really wants to travel in uh, cold weather climates, maybe consider wood burning stoves. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So even though we have a massive solar array, when it gets cold is at nighttime. Right. Right. So we have 2.1 kilowatts of power on the roof, and when it gets hot is in the daytime. So we have all that power to run our air conditioner when we need it. Right. It's hot during the day. It'll run our air conditioner. At nighttime, we have a big battery bank. But making uh, heat with electricity is super inefficient. Right. It's just like a short circuit that makes pop, that makes heat. That that doesn't make sense. So, a, a, a wood stove like this, a small wood stove, um, you buy one of those little five dollar packs of wood from wherever you like to buy them. Right. Cut them directly in half. It fits perfectly in the stove, and that'll heat you for three days. That's crazy. Yeah. So for five bucks, and you know, if you're out in the woods, you can you can find wood anywhere you want to go. Yep. But if if you're in a pinch, scoop it up, and, and you'll be hot. That's great. So you guys literally have your day cooling system set up and your night heating system set up. Perfectly. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. And, our, and if we do, if we are plugged into electricity 
for some reason, our AC does heat as well. Yeah, it And that heats problem. really well. Oh, your AC will also yeah. turn on the heater. But we don't really ever use it because we're not plugged you? in that often. Right, yeah. yeah, we don't need it. And your inverter, I'm gonna, lastly, your inverter is 2,000 watts. Yep, 6,000 watt max. Right. It's an inverter charger. It's an inverter charger, which is just like somebody I know, me. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys run your entire system off of AC power off of that inverter. Yep. Holy heckness. We never turn it off. Um, it runs our refrigerator, our air conditioner, uh, any kind of fans we throw at it. Um, so the way I figured Probably it out. Probably the best inverter I've ever seen on the market. Ames. Ames Power. Ames Power Not is by sponsored, product. but they make a great product. Nor am I, and they make a great product, like yeah, you said. Yeah, really, and it's affordable. I think, so our inverter, we're, we're 48 volt setup like we talked about. And our inverter at 2,000 watts was the most affordable one. It was like 650 bucks. 600 bucks, yeah, yeah. And so how could you go wrong with a price point like that? So I figured... We'll and they try. make a 3,000 watt. Yeah, they do. And they do. you didn't even go that high. No, you don't need it. Right. So the way I figured it out is a lot of people stress out about this kilowatt and they can test how much amps things are drawing. So I knew that where we were parked before we installed this solar setup, we were running on one 15 amp circuit. We never blew the breaker unless I plugged in two air conditioners at once. We used to have a second AC. We don't need it anymore <laughs> since we left Florida. <laughs> so if I plugged in both at once and both the compressors happened to cycle at the same time, it would pop the 15 amp breaker. But other than that, it worked perfectly. Wow. So if you do the math, 2,000 watts at 110 volts is like 14.97 amps, something right. like this. And so that's 15 amps. That's close enough for bank work, right? And so I knew that everything in this house would run off a 2,000 watt max. And so this inverter has a 6,000 watt max. I think it'll run for like three minutes or something like that. But so if, if we ever had something like, like a microwave or something that we wanted to run, mm -hmm. it could handle that. Because mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the surge. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, normal usage, uh, anything we want to do, it doesn't even hiccup. No, Ames is one of, one of the, if not the, best products on the market right now. Yeah, their customer service is top notch. They are, and, and I've called them a couple times. Me and they, too. They, they're amazing. So the way I set this, this system up is, I, I didn't know anything about this. I just Googled it and I read a bunch of reviews. There's this dude, I think he's called Tom Solar. He's got, a, he's got a website with a big blog and stuff you can read through it. And what I did is I grabbed every manual for all the components I knew I needed and I mm -hmm. read them. Mm -hmm. And then I read them again and then I read them again. <laughs> and then I lined them up and I found out what parts went together and I was highlighting things and I read them again and again and again because I don't know anything about this. But the only way to learn is to just read it. Yep. And 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 now if anything goes wrong, I can tell you exactly where all the wires are run. I can I can diagnose it in, in, in seconds, you know? It. So self-reliance and just learn to do it. Why would I pay somebody to avoid learning how to do something? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. And even if I do it two or three or four times, it's still cheaper than paying a professional. And then the next time I do it, it'll, it'll only take me once because mm -hmm. now I'm a professional. Now you, were, you already said to me this uh, earlier before yeah. we started rolling. Uh, you're never going to get rid of this bus. No, absolutely not. No, your 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 family's in this bus. Uh, your blood, your sweat, your tears are in this bus. Yeah, a lot of tears. Yeah, are in this bus. <laughs> Yours <laughs> as well. Uh, you know, uh, hence the rings on your guys' fingers. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys are not going to get rid of this bus. Yes. It is a lovely, lovely build. Thank you. Thank you. I will, and you have a second bedroom, uh, which yeah. I might camp out in myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, they're sitting in their second bedroom right now. <laughs> it, it converts into a full size bed. I've always wanted to do a bus, and this is my first bus tour I've ever done on my YouTube page. Welcome. So. Thank you guys for coming. Please follow them on Instagram if you haven't already. Please do. Yes, please we do. Follow cool them on Instagram. Uh, like, comment, and if you have any questions on solar, this is the guy to talk to. I'll do my best. Look at that beard. You can't <laughs> even say no to it. <laughs> I've made every mistake that can be made, and I'll prevent you from making the same mistakes. And you're an ex-firefighter. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So you have knowledge in fires and wires and- And all 10 fingers and toes. And you have them all so far. So yeah. uh, you, obviously you have uh, uh, fire extinguishers here on board. Two, one you have, here, one there. Boom, there it is. And no, boom, not literally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> easy enough. <laughs> and uh, you have a CO2 detector. Yeah, you have a have smoke apps. detector. Yep. You have it all because of the X firefighter. Yeah. Unbelievable. You got to know how things are put together to know how they burn. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you got a good man right here, and even more importantly, you have a better woman. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is true. You gotta get one of these. I, d I don't know if I can ever handle one. Um, or one can handle me. Uh, and you got two great dogs, um, but hey guys, thank you so much for Thanks for thank coming. You. Thanks for thank having, you. having me on here. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. If you have any questions, hit me up. I'm happy to do it. Hit them up on Instagram. Please Again, do. I'll put it on there. Unbelievable. At the adventure or bus. At the adventure. The adventure or bus. The adventure or bus. B U S T. B U S T. Yeah. We knew we wanted to move, right? And during the gold rush, it was like California or bus or Colorado or bus. Right. Or whatever. So what it means is like make it there or die trying. But we didn't know where we wanted to go, so we didn't have a destination in mind. We just knew we wanted to have an adventure. So it's adventure or, or bust. Adventure or happens. Bus. There it is. Yeah. It yeah. just came to you. Yeah. Adventure or die trying. You guys are amazing. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.